friends this is manoj here and i am a data scientist right now in this particular video we will be discussing about two of the very most popular and very very widely used deep learning tools that is the pytorch as well as the tensorflow now many might have heard of these two particular tools and you might be familiar with pytorch as well as tensorflow that you have heard of this in order to implement a deep learning model we use either of these tools now of course people get bombarded with a lot of confusions and a lot of questions that hey which one should i opt for right if if i have to implement something in the deep learning model let's say let's say if you want to implement a deep learning model which tool or which library should i opt so that i can go in a elegant manner i can finish it up it at at one shot this is one of the most commonly asked question that people get in their mind right so okay so what we are going to do here is we have listed a few key points okay so let's go through some of them and let's try and understand the pros and cons and intuitions of both these tools that is the pytorch as well as the tensorflow cool so let's get started with the pytorch itself now pytorch is itself an open source library that is used in the machine learning as well as the deep learning itself okay similarly tensorflow is also an open source library that is also used in machine learning both of course remember both pytorch as well as tensorflow are the deep learning tools and are used in the machine learning and deep learning field themselves but some of the differences are so basically to pytorch was developed by facebook which is now called as meta right and the public edition the public version was typically released on 2016 so it was a very recent time it was first launched in 2016 coming to tensorflow tensorflow is developed and maintained by a mighty large company that is google organization right and it was typically released for the public of course it is also a public one and it is it was released on 2015 so coming back to pytorch it is imperative which means it runs immediately and the user can check if it is working or not before writing the full code pytorch offers you the flexibility that whenever you are going to write some small snippet of code the editor part or the library tool is going to suggest or correct the user if the code goes wrong at the early stage itself right even before you execute those snippet of code or those set of lines the pytorch will tell you whether it is going to work fine or it is going to throw an error cool but tensorflow is it is mainly focused on the production as well as the research okay so production and research are the main focus that are being used by the tensorflow or it is the uses of tensorflow i can say okay coming to pytorch pytorch it works on a dynamic graph concept whereas in case of tensorflow it believes on a static so what is the static and dynamic right so static is something predefined which is already defined okay so before the execution you are going to set it you are predefining some of the uh, let's say some set of rules and structures that are to be plotted but in case of pytorch it need not have been done predefined so okay there is no concept of predefinitions everything is done dynamically cool pytorch has a fewer features as compared to tensorflow now coming to the features the features that are offered by tensorflow are very very large it, it provides humongous range of flexibility and functionality in order to play around with the data in the whole of deep learning itself pytorch doesn't give that amount of flexibility and it does not have that amount of features so it lacks in some of the features that are being provided by the tensorflow cool now it is very very less supportive in deployments pytorch what happens is since it has only fewer features right the, it is only offering some low level functionalities it is quite difficult or it is very less supportive in case of deployments okay tensorflow it is typically more supportive when compared to pytorch uh, and it and it also supports for the embedded system as well as the mobile deployments okay so any deep learning model that you are going to train and if you want to deploy it over the systems like some of the arduino boards i can say for embedded part wherein you are going to use uh, let's say microprocessor or microcontroller and the mobile as well okay pytorch is basically very easy to learn and understand right 
because tensorflow has its own syntax and uh, structure is typically very complex and large it is not as easy as pytorch right it is very difficult to learn it is it's quite hard to learn in the single shot itself and in case of pytorch pytorch requires users to store everything into a device now in order to let's say let's say if you want to execute and compute some of the things whole data needs to be stored on the particular device right but in case of tensorflow you need not have to worry about that because there are some set of built in functions right there are some set of default functionalities that are being provided with the tensorflow library itself so users can typically access that and you can do your computation that you want to perform right so that's it for today thank you